Hey friends, welcome back. Today I've got a very unofficial sitting in my office sit down video for you that I just wanted to update you on my health issues that have been going on. So if you have been following along at home, here's your update. So I will go ahead and link a few videos either down below or up in the iCard talking about what's been going on if you're just tuning in for the first time. Basically about three weeks ago I ended up in the ER with some pretty nasty intestinal ulcers. Had some blood work done. They were thinking I might have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. I spent two days in the hospital which not expected whatsoever. This week I had my two follow-up appointments, one with the gastro doctor and one with rheumatology, which thank goodness they were able to get me into rheumatology because at first they said it could possibly take up to six months. Historically getting into a rheumatologist is not one of the easiest things, so the fact they got me in so quickly, um, very blessed. When I got out of the hospital they did blood work to test for ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. The blood work came back normal. I do not have Crohn's, I do not have ulcerative colitis, which is great news. But what that means is that the issues that I'm having, the ulcers and the GI problems that I'm having is now in relation to a pre-existing autoimmune disorder that I have called Bichette's disease. And again, I'll link a video where I talk all about that. It's a rare disease, less than 170,000 people in the United States have this, so it's officially classified as rare. And then if you take that demographic, of those of us diagnosed with Bichette's, only about 10 to 15 percent get GI issues. So the, the disease only attacks the gastrointestinal tract of 10 to 15 percent of those with Bichette's. Crazy rare. So of course that's my luck. But at least I kind of have some answers and we're not dealing with Crohn's on top of this. My mom has Crohn's and so I would not have been surprised had I also shown positive for that. So I spoke with the gastro doctor and basically there's not a whole lot they could do at this point. Like the things are healing. I haven't been having as many issues so that's great. Moving forward they just want to follow up in three months. I was given the clear to go ahead and start uh, the keto diet again, which if you've been following along for the last few months, I was eating ketogenic and I lost 30 pounds and I was feeling great. And the reason I started the keto diet was because of my autoimmune disorder. I wanted something that would cut out the inflammatory foods in my diet and keto is great for that. I was given the go ahead. I will probably start back up after the holidays because at this point, I've been eating carbs for the past three and a half weeks, and I may as well go through the holidays without putting undue stress on myself. So I'll start back up in January, most likely. From there, so the gastro appointment was very uneventful, which is good, I guess, in the grand scheme, grand scheme of things. The very next day, which was yesterday at the time of this video, I had my rheumatology appointment. Things could not have gone any better had I written a script for it. So the doctor that I saw was amazing. She heard me, she validated, like, like what I'm going through and she was familiar with Bichette's which is great because most medical professionals that I've ever come in contact with maybe they've heard of it like but they're not really familiar with it because it's rare so she was familiar with it which makes all the difference like when you're planning out treatment and care and she just she took my concerns seriously and she went over my medical history about uh, like how things started 10 years ago and what I went through then and then versus like what's going on now and how things are affecting me. Great appointment. We have a plan of action. She sent me to the lab, took 11 vials of blood. They're going to test for rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing, spondylitis, which are both like a, there's a genetic test to test for the ankylosing spondylitis. She's also running another genetic test that shows a marker for Bichette's, but sometimes it can come back uh, like a false negative. They're testing my immunoglobulins. She kind of explained it like you've got your antibodies and immunoglobulins on one side and then your immune system on the other. Someone my age, so I'm a younger demographic, someone my age who gets shingles as often as I do, which is typically a few times a year, sometimes that means that your immunoglobulins are low and if they are they're able to give a medication that can help bump those up so that way your immune system is, is stronger as well so they ran tests for that like i said 11 vials of blood later um, i'm sure they're testing for all sorts of stuff in regards to the ankylosing spondylitis that is basically arthritis that attacks your spine specifically i have had undiagnosed un like characterized back pain since 
all of this started 10 years ago. MRIs, CTs, x-rays all come back normal. It doesn't show any sort of deformity. It doesn't show any anything. I see the chiropractor quite frequently. It doesn't give long-term relief. The ankylosing spondylitis would explain what's happening like in regards to my back pain, like almost to a T. When I came home and did some research, like I tend to do, everything that it was characterized as, like the types of pain, like it can affect your, your lower back, all the way up through your spine, your shoulders, your neck. It can affect your rib cage and the cartilage between your breastbone and your rib cage. And I get pain there. It just, reading it, I was like, check, check, check. Like it just, it's, it sounds exactly like what I'm going through. Another thing is that it gets worse with inactivity. So at night, like I can go to bed and I'm not in pain, but halfway through the night I wake up in pain and typically have to like prop my pillows up and sleep in a upright sitting position with like pillows and like blankets propped around my neck. Not uncommon for my husband to wake up when he goes to work and see me propped up in bed. That's something that I've dealt with for years. Part of the ankylosing spondylitis is that, you know, when you're sleeping, the spine starts to compress on itself. It can wake you up in the middle of the night with back pain. That's been my life for years. So like when I read that, it was just like, oh my gosh. Not saying that that's what I have, but it would make sense if I did. Another thing is that it affects the eyes which Bichette's also affects the eyes. You get eye inflammation. I'm actually dealing with some right now. I've been on steroids for the past month and it's taken care of a lot of the symptoms, but every time I taper down on the prednisone, symptoms start breaking through. So the prednisone is holding things. It's kind of like in my mind, I'm picturing like the prednisone as this wall and it's holding the symptoms back. And every time I try to taper the wall down a little bit, the symptoms are like breaking through. It's been hard to taper off of the medication, especially now that it's affecting my eyes because when the eyes become inflamed, it puts pressure on the retina and it can one, change my eyesight, like literally physically forever change my vision. Two, untreated, it can lead to blindness, luckily pretty familiar with the symptoms and what to watch for because I get the eye inflammation a few times a year, typically along with shingles. They kind of come hand in hand for me. I get shingles near my eye. Along with that is usually the uveitis and eye inflammation. I know what to watch for. Over the past few days, I've been feeling the unmistakable feeling of inflammation in my eyes. Just trying to keep an eye on that, no pun intended. I upped my prednisone a little bit to try and like kick it out because it's... It's not painful right now, but it's annoying. Like I can feel it. You know that feeling you get when you cry and your eyes feel puffy? Like I don't think you can really notice anything right now. Like they look normal, but my eyes just feel like swollen and it's from the pressure coming from behind, putting pressure on the retina. Ankylosing spondylitis can cause the eye inflammation, which I thought was strange. Bichette's does as well, so it could be from one or the other. So right now, just waiting for lab work to come back, dealing with things kind of one day at a time. The doctor did say that at this point, my body is in such a full-blown flare-up, which obviously I knew because it's attacking me from head to toe, but she said that a more systemic approach at this point would be best. So we are tapering down the prednisone still, but instead of just like not having anything to fall back on, she also started me on an immunosuppressant called Imuran. Orally, it, there's also a version that you can get as a injection, but I'm taking just the pills. And we're starting on a lower dose to see if that will help kind of like take the place of the prednisone. But in the meantime, my immune system is going to be weakened because it basically like shuts your immune system down so that it stops fighting itself. So hopefully I don't get sick through cough and cold the season because I'm just more susceptible at this point. But I started the new medication yesterday. I'll taper down off the steroids over the next two weeks, follow up with her in a month to see where we go from there. She's also um, handling my pain management at this point with uh, pain medication. She said in the future, like when I have my follow up, if I'm still having the pain, which most likely I will be. I have the back pain constantly. I've dealt with it for 10 years. She'll refer me to a pain management specialist, which is probably what I need to be seen anyway. That's kind of where we stand right now. Yay, it's not Crohn's. Yay, it's not ulcerative colitis, but I could have rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis. So that's what we're waiting to hear back on and go from there. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. Um, I know a lot of you have been checking in on me and I really, really appreciate that. It's been a great community of support and I appreciate it. So thank you so, so much. I'm just glad that as we head into the holidays here in this coming week that I have a plan of action and I have medication and I have a doctor who's on my side and who's knowledgeable and who makes like me feel validated versus me walking into an office and trying to educate them and feeling 
defeated at the end of the appointment, which is how it's gone the past few months with my general practitioner. Specialists are there for a reason and I'm glad that I have a team of them on my side. So thanks again for watching. I will be back here soon with some more fun videos, but I just wanted to throw this update up so that you are all caught up with what's happening. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye.